Roman Reigns has been the Universal Champion for nearly 700 days and it's led to the question as to who. Who's going to be the one to beat him? So it's led to a lot of names coming out as to who could be the one to dethrone him. Among those always mentioned are Cody Rhodes, Braun Breaker, Seth Rollins and others. But one name that's always on that list is Drew McIntyre. With Clash at the Castle happening in September and the distinct possibility that it could be him, I thought it'd be cool to put together a storyline seeing Drew get his crowning moment in front of the fans. Personally, I'm of the belief that, you know, Breaker, Hayes, Steveson, one of those really young guys should be the one to beat Roman, but Drew is a fantastic option as well. The guy's insanely talented, he's kind of lost his way a little bit, he hasn't had his crowning moment in front of fans, there's demons of the past to play off of, especially when you contrast Roman and Drew's career. So this is going to be a longer one, I haven't done this in 3 months, I feel like I owe you guys a longer one. Remember, these stories are not real. Last time somebody got really mad because they were like, hey, I searched this all up on YouTube and I couldn't find anything. Yeah, that's because they're not real. I'm not claiming them to be real either. These are sheerly for your entertainment and it's just me being an idiot for like 30, 40 minutes. So it's booked. It's episode four. Drop a like, grab some food. Let's get right into it. It's June of 2022 and Drew McIntyre has requested some time to speak on SmackDown. Drew sits in the middle of the ring, spotlight on him, and he's brought a blazer with him to the ring. He talks about how this was the blazer that he wore out to the ring when Vince McMahon announced him as the chosen one. Goes on to tell us that not everything went his way. His life spiraled out of control, he was fired, he was lost, he was in a dark place. A place that he never wants to see again. But he found his way back and even though he got his moment at WrestleMania 36, that's not how this story can conclude. He wants his moment in front of the WWE fans. He calls out Roman Reigns and he gets no answer. Instead, Paul Heyman comes out and he has a very serious tone to the way he speaks. He tells Drew that he's one of the company's biggest failures ever. And Heyman just goes, you got your moment in front of no one because you are a no one. Heyman in the ring tells Drew that you were supposed to be the face of this company, what Roman Reigns is now. This was supposed to be you on the posters, you on the merch, you headlining pay-per-views, and basically being the king of this industry, but it's not. You let everyone down, you let your family down, you let your peers down, and most importantly, you let down Vince McMahon. And Roman Reigns has never let down Vince McMahon. So here you're kind of starting to contrast where Drew was supposed to be versus where Roman Reigns is, which is the end goal for Drew, to be in Roman's place. And Heyman just says, the answer is no, it will always be no, and Drew leaves the ring. He goes to talk to Adam Pearce, who adds him into the Money in the Bank ladder match. Roman is still nowhere to be seen. It's kind of this thing where Roman is ducking Drew, but deep down you can see that Roman himself knows that Drew is the biggest threat that he's had yet. At Money in the Bank, Drew has a great performance, and near the end of the match, the ladder is set up, everyone is down, Drew climbs up, but the briefcase moves upwards and out of Drew's reach. While Drew's looking around at who's doing this, the Usos come out, they take out Drew, and this match is instead won by Cody Rhodes. Roman is backstage laughing in his locker room watching on from a monitor. Clearly, he had something to do with this. The next week, SmackDown begins with Drew McIntyre incensed. He enters the locker room with a chair in hand and he destroys the entirety of the locker room to the point where these guys are basically competing on SmackDown all bruised and battered. Drew goes to Pierce and demands a title match at SummerSlam. Heyman interjects and he says that Drew should have to fight his way into it. So a 2 on 1 handicap match is finessed by Paul Heyman. Drew walks through that match like it's nothing, he beats down both Usos and now it's official. Reigns, McIntyre, main event of SummerSlam 2022. There's little teases of dissension between the Usos and Roman over the coming weeks because Roman is in this position because of the Usos. Specifically Jay, he's the one who took the pin and he's the one that Roman is just losing his mind over. The next week, Drew comes out and he talks about how he's gonna do it. He shares a personal story with the WWE fans about when he won in 2020. It was great, but it upset him. He felt like he wasn't a true champion because he wasn't in front of the fans. Casual babyface promo and out comes Roman Reigns. These two go back and forth and slowly Roman's true colors really come out. It's not that Roman doesn't want to fight Drew again. Roman knows that Drew is a huge threat. Roman tells Drew, 
I hate you. I will always hate you. I hate the fact that when I was sick twice in 2018 and in 2020, that people actually thought you were capable of handling my company. He says he saw the tweets, he saw the list, he saw the articles, he saw what people had to say and he's like, Drew, you're hunting for this moment, but as long as I'm here, you'll never get this moment. You're not capable of the responsibility it takes to handle this company. Just look at your failures. Drew's like, okay, you always ask for people to acknowledge you and you're putting me down. Watch this. On the screen appears a clip of John Cena. Cena's returned for his 20th anniversary and he puts over Drew big time. He says how he's one of the absolute best in the world and he has everything it takes to carry this company. Camera cuts back and Roman's like, yo, I already beat that bum. He's all confident. But Drew goes, hold on, I dug up another clip. And then another clip plays on the Titantron and it's The Rock. A Rock is giving an interview and he does the same thing. He says that McIntyre is one of the absolute best in the world, but when asked about Roman, he smiles and he walks off. Camera cuts back and Drew's like, yo Roman, that looks like an acknowledgement to me. And Roman's entire expression changes. It's almost like seeing The Rock has possessed his body. He drops the titles and these two end SmackDown with a locker room clearing brawl. Security guards, superstars, officials, everyone rushes out. I'm talking Brock and Cena 2012 on steroids. But both men just keep fighting out of the crowd. They get their hands on each other and at the end of it, Drew stands tall with Reigns bleeding from the face. One foot on his chest and Drew holds up both titles. The next week, we see that Drew has returned home to Scotland. He's not on SmackDown and with him is a sword. He tells a personal story of him and his mom. He tells us that his mom meant so much to him and in her honor, he carries this sword. Drew cries as he walks us around his home. He shows us pictures of his family. He shows us all his key memorabilia from his career. He shows us drawings of when he was a kid holding up the WWE title. And he says there's one thing missing from this picture when I did it. The crowd, the crowd wasn't there. At the end, we arrive at a glass box. Drew puts the sword into the box and he walks us through an album and pictures of him and his mom over the years. We get a fantastic shot of one of Drew's teardrops landing right on one of the photos. But now he says it's time to leave this right here. He puts the sword into the case and he says, this is for her. I hope she's watching. So this is kind of a way to retire the sword and tell a story that Drew is on this redemption arc for his mom. He hopes that his mom's watching. End of the show, Roman and Paul decide they're going to head to the ring and they're going to read a letter to the fans. They read out Drew's termination letter. They read it out for the entire world to see and they laugh at him. They laugh at the failure. They bring up Drew's demons of the past and Heyman and Roman are cut off by Bret Hart. Hart obviously being Drew's all-time favorite. Hart puts over Drew big time. So this is three people who have now done this. Hart says that Roman is scared and Roman's like, no, I don't fear anybody. Roman goes on to ask for Bret Hart to acknowledge him. Acknowledge that he's had a better career than Bret Hart. He refuses to do that. So Roman decides to cheap shot Bret, takes the termination letter, shreds it to pieces and drops the pieces over Bret Hart as SmackDown comes to an end. The next week, it's the go home to SummerSlam and a contract signing between both men. Drew is furious as to what Roman did and once the contract is signed, Drew flips over the table and he starts to beat down Roman. From behind, the Usos attack and they handcuff Drew down. They make sure he's looking up at Roman and Roman's just pacing around the ring and he puts his hand out. Heyman hands Roman an envelope. In that envelope are Polaroid type pictures of Drew and his career up until this point. The Usos are holding him down and Roman slowly takes out each picture and he rips it up in front of Drew's face while well, Drew can do nothing about it. Drew's debut, Roman rips it up. Drew winning the Intercontinental title, Roman rips it up. Drew winning the Rumble, rip. And Roman is just getting closer and closer and Drew can do nothing about this. And it's really paining him to see this. Drew winning the WWE title, Roman talks about how that's the last one he's ever gonna win, rips up the photo. And now it's on to the last picture and the picture is of Drew McIntyre and his mom, Angela. And Roman holds it for a second and he's about to rip it. And he's like, come on, I'm not a monster. He folds up the picture, gives it a kiss and he puts it in his pocket. Roman commands the Usos to drag Drew's lifeless body to the top of the ramp where Roman hits a spear through the LED board into Drew McIntyre and the show goes off the air looking a little bit something like this. 
It's time for SummerSlam. We're in Nashville. It's a great show so far, and now we're at the end of the night. Main event time. These two tear each other apart, and Drew has some close falls. But the one key thing is he never hits his finisher. Near the end of the match, the ref isn't looking. Roman uses a low blow to take control of the match. And when he goes for a spear, he accidentally takes out the ref. Drew takes control afterwards, hits a Glasgow kiss, and now he's in the corner ready to hit a Claymore. The countdown begins, 3, 2, and just as he's about to get to 1, we hear... Vince McMahon walks down the ramp and he gets into the ring with the ref still out. He asks for a mic and just as he's about to grab it, he kicks McIntyre low, throws the ref in the ring, Reigns hits a spear, makes the cover, one, two, but Drew kicks out. And Vince reactively just calls for the bell, screws over Drew. Drew's not pinned, not submitted, he hasn't hit his finisher, but he's been screwed over and who knows for what reason. SummerSlam goes off the air with Vince McMahon and Roman shaking hands, Vince raising his golden boy's hand, and Drew screwed out of his title match. SmackDown opens up with Vince McMahon and Paul Heyman refusing to comment on what happened at SummerSlam, but Drew McIntyre comes out and he gets face to face with Vince McMahon. And Vince McMahon smiles in his face saying that it can't be you, it'll never be you, for as long as Roman is here, You'll never do it. For the sake of this company, I was protecting my investment. I was protecting my money maker. Vince says to Drew that Roman said, you're the guy I send somewhere when Roman's not available. And that's true, you can't carry this company. And then Vince gets real personal. He leans into Drew's dark past and he compares it to Roman. Vince out of his pocket pulls out a bandana, signaling Drew to go back to where he belongs. 3MB as a sideline act and when Drew refuses he tells Vince that he's gonna reach the mountaintop if it's the last thing he does. Vince slaps Drew over and over again until Drew snaps, hits a Glasgow kiss on Vince and Vince is bleeding from the head. Security come out, they walk Drew out of the arena and Roman looks on from behind. We find out that Drew has been indefinitely suspended and the next week is what Vince McMahon claims as the tribal chief's coronation. The next week comes and Vince starts off the show and he tells everyone about his biggest creations. Hogan, Austin, Rock, Cena, and then he gets to Roman Reigns. He talks about how Roman is the greatest, how there's no one on Roman's level. And he says, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the real chosen one. Out comes Roman Reigns in a suit. Similar to how Drew came out when he was introduced, they have a throne for him to assume in the center of the ring, pyro blaring, confetti falling, champagne. Roman gives a speech and he talks about legacies and how some people's legacies are just failures, just like Drew. He blasts the fans about how they're willing on Drew. They're pumping up a false narrative that they're making him believe that he can actually do this, but he'll never overcome it. And Vince just continues to praise Roman and right as Roman is about to sit on the throne, there's commotion at ringside. A fan has jumped the barricade, which has obviously been planted by the WWE. And as everyone's attention is over to that side, from behind is a man dressed in all black. He plants Roman with a Future Shock DDT, and before security can get him, he flees away. We all know it's Drew McIntyre, and now he's showing up to shows even though he's suspended. Roman and Vince then go backstage. At the end of the night, they call out Drew. Instead of Drew coming out to confront them, we get a shot on the video board. Both Usos have been laid out backstage and a car is driving off into the distance. As Roman is watching on, we slightly hear this. <coughs> Just that tiny little riff. People think it's a production error, but of course, it's Drew playing mind games. But again, it's like it sets something off inside of Roman. He's all paranoid looking around and he just says to Vince, bring him back. And Vince is like, what? Roman's like, bring him back. I want to end him once and for all. So because of Roman, Vince offers Drew a new contract the following week and he's going to reinstate him. Hype's being built up over social media and the question is, will Drew accept Vince's invitation to have a conversation? The contract is for an undisputed Universal Championship match and it seems very suspect. All of a sudden, Vince is ready to give Drew a title match. Next week, Vince waits, Drew comes out to the ring dressed in a suit, signs the contract, and then there's a big smile that appears on Vince's face because there's unwritten provisions in the contract which Drew hasn't read. 
And then Viz just tells him, over the next few weeks, I'm gonna make your life hell. I'm gonna make you quit. If you don't survive, you're fired. He said he's gonna prove to the entire world that Drew McIntyre has always been a fraud. He says that Vince McMahon has never been proven wrong. This time, I will prove myself wrong. Vince just says that I've made a lot of mistakes, but my biggest fault was telling the entire world that you, you were actually capable of bearing the flag for this company. And Vince begins to bring out those demons of the past again. And it's like something goes off in Drew when he hears those. He's like, what about your divorce? What about your release? Did you have drug abuse? Maybe alcohol abuse? So much that we don't know and Vince talks about just how much Drew has embarrassed him. Vince is like that briefcase moving at Money in the Bank was the brass ring and you'll never reach the brass ring. As long as Roman's here, that's not gonna happen. And again, Vince slaps Drew in the face. Drew remains calm and then he does it again and then he does it again. And with each continuing slap, Drew gets more and more vicious. Drew grabs McMahon by the tie and he pulls him into a corner. He doesn't hit him, nothing really happens, but he whispers to him. He tells him that this is the most ready that he's ever been. Vince has a big smile on his face and he waves down security. Security comes down and they hold Drew McIntyre to the ring mat. And then Vince McMahon waves out Roman Reigns. Reigns comes out, a big smile on his face, shakes hands with Vince while Drew is still on the ground. And Roman winks at Vince because this was all clearly a setup. And then Roman signals for Jimmy and Jay. Jay comes out and he's like, okay, we went over this in the back. And from under the ring, Jay brings out a whip. Call back to Hell in a Cell 2020. And as security holds down Drew, Roman lashes him over and over. And he's like, you want my spot, you'll never have my spot. And Drew is defenseless, he's helpless. He lies in the ring, he's out. And after taking about five whips to the back, Vince McMahon grabs his face, pulls it off the mat, points it upwards towards Roman, and he's like, look, you have no friends, you have no championship, you have no future, you have no spot in this company. And then Roman hands the whip over to Vince. Vince hits Drew with the whip, and he goes, this is for embarrassing me. Drew can't move, his back looks like this. Roman has one foot firmly on Drew's back. Vince raises Roman's hand, and SmackDown goes off the air. Also on the weekly, we're getting these story time segments with Drew McIntyre throughout the show. It helps WWE fans get a more personal and up close approach with Drew McIntyre. We hear more about his hardships and the crowd are almost all behind Drew at this point because they've seen just how much bullshit this man has gone through. In a digital exclusive, the provisions for Drew's contract are revealed. They are that Drew cannot lay his hands on Roman until Clash at the Castle, that Drew must adhere to everything Vince McMahon says. And most importantly, if Drew loses in Cardiff or he doesn't adhere to what Vince says, he's fired. He's gone for good. The match at Clash at the Castle is for both titles. It's no DQ, but if Drew McIntyre loses, he's gone for good. And so it begins the first week. McMahon says for this week, he has to be Roman's bitch. The show starts off, Roman's forcing Drew to accompany the Usos to the ring for their tag team title match and he has to help them win, which he does. They embarrass him throughout the show by making him Roman's lapdog, bringing him water, guard his locker room and the works. At the end of the show, Roman demands that Drew show up to the ring, bend the knee and acknowledge him. Throughout the night, superstars are going to Drew and they're saying, don't do it, but Drew says he has to do this for his destiny. He's at a crossroads. If he doesn't do it, he's fired. If he does, He's embarrassing himself. So we get to the end of the night and Drew's here to acknowledge Roman Reigns. But first, Roman leaves the ring and he grabs three kendo sticks. He tells Drew to face the hard cam and Drew's like, I'm not doing that. And then Roman reminds him, if he doesn't, he's fired. The Usos and Roman deliver 13 kendo stick shots to the back of Drew. One for each year that Drew has apparently failed Vince McMahon. They pick him back up, he's bruised, he's battered, and they tell him to bend the knee. Just as Drew is about to, because he has to, out comes Sheamus, and he stops Drew from doing it. And as Sheamus is in the ring, Roman instructs the Usos to grab Sheamus. Roman hands Drew a chair and he says, hit him. That's one of your best friends in the world. I want you to hit him. And Drew is conflicted. He knows if he doesn't, he's fired. He says he's sorry, and he hits a chair shot to a prone Sheamus. And then Roman asks for another, and Roman's just smiling ear to ear. Drew, with near tears in his eyes, complies, and he keeps making Drew do it until Sheamus just can't get up anymore. 
And then Roman says, now it's your turn. Acknowledge me. Bend the knee. And as Drew looks at both of Roman's titles, what well, he's been chasing, his destiny to get to the top, he looks around at the fans, he looks at the crowd, and he slowly falls down to a knee. He says, I acknowledge you, and he closes his eyes at what he's just done. It's almost like the pain is unbearable. Roman's smiling, he's hyped, and he tips his head. From the left and the right, Drew is caught by super kicks from each Uso. Roman instructs the Usos to go under the ring and grab thumbtacks. They triple powerbomb Drew into the thumbtacks, and out of his pocket, Roman pulls out that same picture of Drew and his mom. And he's like, this is what you're fighting for. Don't forget her. And he says that Drew's career is going the same place as his mom. Hell. Smackdown closes. We're about three weeks away from Clash at the Castle. And the next week, Vince McMahon has announced a gauntlet match for Drew McIntyre to compete in. And if he loses or he's counted out, he's fired. We come to the next week and the show starts off with Roman Reigns entering the arena. Out from his car and Drew attacks him with a kendo stick. And everyone's like, this probably means that Drew's fired. So Roman's in a rage. He's like, he touched me. And then Heyman's like, no, that's not part of the contract. He's allowed to hit you with a kendo stick. So Vince adds in a new rule, no weapons either. So they just make it that Roman cannot be touched by Drew McIntyre at all. More tales of the warrior throughout the show, showing Drew's rise and fall and brief rise again. End of the night, Drew's ready to run the gauntlet. His wife is sitting at ringside for this match as well. First up, Dolph Ziggler, and everything comes flooding back. Drew realizes what Vince is doing. He is telling Drew's story throughout the years. Drew beats Dolph, and the next person up is Kofi. Those two shake hands, they have a competitive match, and Drew wins. After knocking him off, the next opponent is Jimmy Uso. He survives him, and this is where both Roman and Vince come out to ringside to watch the match. Next up is Jay Uso, and before Jay heads down to the ring, Roman pulls him aside and he tells him again, do you remember what you did two months ago? You lost a two-on-one handicap match to this guy. He says if you lose, there's going to be major consequences. And again, Jay's got this look on his face like, yo, is Drew actually right? Is he actually using me? Jay survives for the longest out of anyone. Jimmy comes back in to run interference, but they still keep going. Drew catches Jay with a claymore and he pins him. So now he's ran through Jay, Jimmy, Kofi, and Dolph. Roman gets into the ring. All three of Jimmy, Jay, and Roman beat down Drew with a smile on their face because of course they know that Drew can't touch Roman. And they just completely lay him out. Chair shots, finishers, spears, the works. And Drew is defenseless. Like he can't even get up at this point. And the next person out is Sheamus. And Drew is just spent in the corner. He cannot get up. Sheamus makes his way down and he's pumping up his chest, setting up for a bro kick. McIntyre gets up, but he collapses to the ring mat immediately. And Sheamus just stops. He looks down at Drew. Even though these two have had their differences, Sheamus comes to his senses and realizes that's one of his best friends ever. Sheamus picks up Drew off the map, props him up, and these two share a big hug. And Sheamus is just like, I love you, bro. Sheamus leaves the ring, helping Drew win via countout, to which Roman and Vince are furious. Vince then grabs a mic and he's like, alright, this last one is a 2 on 1 handicap match. No DQs as well. Right after this announcement, we hear... Three That's right, out come Jinder Mahal and Heath Slater, all dressed in 3MB outfits, and they have a brief moment where all three of them are looking at each other and everything comes flooding back. They're all smiling, but just as they're about to have their moment, Vince instructs them to do as they told and they start to beat down on Drew. Drew, however, gets through the match. He starts to dominate. You guys know how they used to put up the three fingers for the three MB? Heath slowly puts up the three. And Drew, he puts up the three as well. But that three for three MB slowly turns to a two. Then it turns to a one. And finally, a claymore to Heath Slater. Drew gets the win and he continues to fight for his dreams. He goes to his wife at ringside and he shares a big hug with her. But from behind, Roman with a chair. And in the area between the apron and the barricade, the Usos hold down Drew again. And Roman circles next to Drew's wife. And Roman's like, come on, Drew, reach out, reach out. He grabs Drew's hand and he puts it towards his wife. And instead, 
He grabs Drew's wife's hand and he plants a kiss on it. And Drew's expression tells the entire story. Drew fights out of the grip of the Usos. And from behind, Sheamus attacks Roman with a lead pipe. All three men are down and Sheamus and Drew share a hug. Drew hugs his wife and he goes to Vince McMahon and he's just like, two weeks. Two weeks until your golden boy gets it. And we finally end a SmackDown where Drew is at the top. So this friendship between Drew and Sheamus, we're kind of rebuilding it again. They've had their rivalry, but I don't think they've told this story properly. There's a lot of different ways to go with this. And let's say Drew does win the title, which you've read the title, he's going to. In between, you can tell a really fantastic story between Sheamus and Drew. You tie in their past, you tie in the present, you tie in how they came up. Money. Now we're two weeks out and it's announced that Vince McMahon will give both men one last chance to say whatever they want. At the end of the night, the lights are turned off, the LED board is off, the whole arena is black, and there's a spotlight on the two men sitting at both ends of the table. And again, Roman reiterates those same points. You know, when my life was in danger, everyone was talking about you. And then he tells everyone, the reason why I returned like this is you. He tells everyone that Drew is the reason why he came back as a tribal chief. He tells him that when his health was horrible, he saw everything. And he asks Vince McMahon to hand him a bag. And out of that bag, Roman takes out a replica US title. He places it on Drew's shoulder and he says, this is where you belong, not at the top. You always look up at me. You'll always be below me. And Roman says, by the time I'm done, it'll be time for Drew to hang him up as well. Drew tells Roman that he's the last of his kind. And when it's not me, it's not going to be anyone. And then for some reason, Roman's head goes down. He starts to cry. At least it looks like it. As he's wiping away his fake tears, he slowly brings his head up and he laughs. He's like, I'm acting. I'm acting just like how you were acting to be a champion in 2020. Like I always said, you'll always be my favorite number two. So with this segment, they don't have mics in hand. It's basically like 2020 before Survivor Series, a very serious approach to it. And it just has everyone's attention. Drew says it's because Reigns knows that he was losing his spot. Reigns knows that if he didn't come back as he did, he would have been the number two. He's manipulating his family. Drew says that just imagine what I've gone through the past months and in my entire life. You actually think that I can't do just a little bit more. And Roman rebuttals. He's like, I hate you. I always have and I always will. And he tells Drew, he's like, you brought my family into this. You, you don't talk shit about my family. And he tells him, remember, Drew, through and through, I'm a family man. I love yours as much as I do mine. I'm also a workaholic, so sometimes I need a vacation. He looks over at Vince and he's like, how about next week off? And Vince is like, done. Roman says that he's going to spend his vacation with Drew's family. Not because he has to, but because he wants to. But Drew, just remember, you brought my family into this and now it's my turn. He tells Vince to tell the sponsors to look away because when family is brought up, Roman Reigns always wins. He's like, just because this match is in Wales... Don't think that Drew is going to win. And Roman then says, you know what the best part about being at the top is? Is that with a snap of a finger, you can get anything you want. A spotlight appears at the top of the ramp. Jimmy and Jay come down dragging the lifeless body of Sheamus. They drop it at the front of the ring and Drew goes to check on him. The last thing you see is Vince and Roman standing tall in the ring. Meanwhile, on the outside, Drew and EMTs check on Sheamus. So Roman's character is slowly transitioning from this guy all about the family to this self-centered but at the same time calculated heel and I'm gonna make him an even bigger heel after this. He's supposed to be the biggest douchebag around because if you haven't gotten the idea yet, we're setting up for Roman Reigns versus The Rock. The next week, Drew starts off SmackDown and Drew comes out. He calls the crew into the ring and he gives a really passionate speech about how he's going to do it. And he really makes everyone believe. You see the true passion coming out of Drew. He asks the crew to bring in memorabilia of his career and everything is displayed in the ring. And again, Drew just tells us about the journey he's been on, how much he's been humiliated and how Roman Reigns has had a stranglehold on this company for far too long and now he's gonna save it vince comes out and he says that drew just can't do it he says i don't see a scenario where he beats roman reigns he's like look at his track record he beat lesnar he beat edge he beat cena he beat goldberg 
you're not better than any one of those men and drew just simply gives a guarantee that he's gonna do it and if he can't then vince is right to fire him but if he does then he's gonna make vince look like the world's biggest idiot to which vince puts drew in a 30 minute iron man match to soften him up his opponent gunther Throughout the show, we get video packages, and you know that vacation that Roman was going to go on? Well, he went to Air Scotland, Drew McIntyre's hometown. We get beautifully shot videos, and it follows Roman, the Usos, and Paul Heyman around as they look throughout the town. First, they go to Drew's school, and they look through his old pictures, and they talk to his teachers, and they mock him. They mock his upbringing, they mock his family. Later on, they head to where Drew had his first ever wrestling match, and they mock that. But again... Jay is looking a little bit hesitant. Again, he's starting to see, yo, maybe this man is evil. Once they're done there, Roman tells Jay, Jimmy, and Paul to head back to the hotel that there's one more stop that he needs to make. At the end of the show, SmackDown comes to an end. Drew wins his match barely. He's bruised, he's battered, Gunther has killed him. But as he's celebrating, he's interrupted on the video board. We get a segment in this eerie forest type setting and Roman Reigns slowly appears in the shot. He's carrying a bouquet of flowers and as it zooms out we realize he's in a cemetery in Scotland. He walks and he walks and he walks until he finds a tomb that reads Angela Galloway, Drew's mom and he goes to the tomb. And he just takes a big deep breath. He looks around kind of upset and kind of creeped out and a little uneasy. He starts to talk to the grave and he's like, your son, he's a good man. He's a great man. He loves you just like you loved him. He's a family man. But we all know there's only one true family man in this company. He slows down and he says that you provided Drew everything, everything to get him here. I know you'll be watching from above or down under with a smile on his face. Then he stops, he gets real serious, he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry for what I'm about to make your son go through, I'm sorry for ending his hopes and dreams and his career, and he just says that this business isn't for him, and Roman's crying, who knows if it's acting, who knows if he's actually doing it, and he just continues to talk, he's like, and he's looking around, he's uneasy, he's like, just no, your love for your son will live on through me, and he slowly places the bouquet of flowers at the front of the grave. With that is the picture he folded up in his pocket a few months ago. And also, a ticket to clash at the castle. He says, Drew brought my family into this, and I'm sorry I have to bring you into this. And the last thing you hear before this segment ends is two words from Roman. I'm sorry. There's tears running down his face, but he winks to the camera and he has a huge smirk on his face. Camera cuts back and Drew is in the ring livid. And this man destroys, and I mean destroys, like 2010 Nexus style, the entire ringside area. The ring is a mess, the tables are ripped up, the barricade he throws around Walter. The locker room floods out by Vince's request to take down Drew, but Drew beats the shit out of everyone. This man Roman has gone way 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 too far and the last thing we see is drew mcintyre grabbing the camera pointing it towards him and staring directly into it and the last five words we hear before the show goes off the air roman i'm gonna kill you now it's time to fight in cardiff September 3rd, 2022, we're in Cardiff, Wales for Clash at the Castle. After two and a half months of being tortured, being thrown in handicap matches, being put in gauntlet matches, having his family targeted, having his past failures displayed in front of the entire world, being lashed and just full on being embarrassed, can Drew McIntyre finally do it? The video package hits showing Drew's entire rise and fall and rise again. And then the package comes to an abrupt stop as in walks Roman Reigns. Roman is painted as the hurdle. The biggest hurdle in not only Drew's career, but his life. These two are seen working out just like Cena and Lesnar back in 2014. We see both their careers paralleled and how Roman has had the better one. And the question is, can Drew do it? Legends are giving their thoughts. Bret Hart, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, Edge, and lastly, Brock Lesnar. He picks Drew McIntyre. The package finishes and we see Drew's moments montaged on the Titantron. Then we hear this.
But just then, the lights go black, the crowd goes silent, and it transitions to this. Drew comes out and he brings the sword back. He gives it a big kiss, planting it into the ground. Drew wears this exact gear, the same gear that things began with. Roman comes out and here we go. The match begins and Drew destroys Roman Reigns for a solid 10 minutes. Like I'm talking all types of offense. Roman doesn't even get a punch in. They work their way to the outside. Drew chucks this man through both announce tables and you see the anger on full display. He is just unloading on Roman and for the first time, Roman hasn't had any offense. Until Jimmy Uso runs in and he interferes in the match. This turns the tide in Roman's favor and interestingly enough, Jay is nowhere to be found. Then Drew turns the match back in his favor. He goes underneath the ring and he gets that same whip. The same whip which has caused him so much pain. He goes into the ring and he starts to trash talk Roman. Roman's laying prone in the ring and Drew says during the match that this is for all the legends that you've disrespected. John Cena, whip shot to Roman. Edge, whip shot to Roman. Goldberg, whip shot to Roman. Brock Lesnar, whip shot to Roman. Drew circles the ring for a while and he goes back to the whip and he says, these ones, these ones are your family and the legacy that you've been manipulating for years. Jimmy, whip shot. Jay, whip shot. Rikishi, whip shot to Roman. Using the legacy of the Wild Samoans, whip shot to Roman. Using the legacy of Umaga and Rocky Johnson, whip shot. Using the legacy of his brother Rosie, somehow, some way, whip shot. And then he says, you're gonna like this one, The Rock. And just as Drew is about to hit the whip shot for The Rock, Roman catches the whip under his arm and he throws it out of the ring. His expression completely changes from pain to disdain. And he just gives Drew the look like, what did you just say? And he's like, say it again. Say it again. Upon hearing the name, it's like something goes off in Roman's head. He gets incensed and he tells Drew that no man's legacy is greater than his. He's not going to let any man's name overshadow his. So more and more hints are sewed in for Roman versus Rock. Roman and Drew go back and forth until the nemesis of this series returns again. The ref bump. The ref gets knocked out and Roman waves out Vince. Vince is dressed in a ref shirt. Vince tries to count a quick three, but he can't. Vince then waves down a bunch of additional superstars to get in Drew's way. Drew fights them all off, but as he's fending them off, Roman from the corner hits a spear. After the spear, Vince tries to make the count, but Drew kicks out. And now Roman and Vince, they're getting in each other's face. Roman goes for another one, but this time Drew pulls Vince into the way and Roman's safety ticket is now gone. But with now two refs out, Roman hits a low blow and he starts to talk smack. Roman looks up to the sky and he's like, you watching Angela? Look at your baby boy. Hang on. I'm going to send his career exactly where you are. And Drew's expression just changes. He's on the ring mat and he gets up. Two middle fingers right to Roman. Obviously the camera doesn't show this. And Drew just goes to town on Roman, just destroys him. Hits him with a Glasgow kiss just as the ref is recovering. Roman's down and out. Drew heads to the corner. He goes to the corner and he starts the countdown. Three, two, and before the one, he kisses the one towards the heavens for his mom. And when Drew puts the one in the air, he slowly brings it down towards him and he stares at the finger for a second. It's almost like there's an untold story behind the number one. He points at himself and he says one, chosen one. Closes his eyes and he prays to God that this is it. Opens them back up, Claymore square to Reigns' face, one, two, three. With tears in his eyes, Drew McIntyre has done it. He's gotten his moment and now he's the undisputed WWE Universal Champion. He's overcome his demons, he's put the past to rest, and he's done it. He's reached the mountaintop. Drew McIntyre, Jeff Hardy style, goes to the top of the castle set. The absolute king of the world. The biggest pyroblast ever, you'd think you're in Saudi Arabia. But we're not finished yet. After this, what needs to happen, and Roman Reigns fans don't get angry at me for saying this, Roman needs to be off TV for a while, and I'll tell you why. 
Having Roman still on TV will overshadow Drew because Drew, in the most respectful way possible, is just not as big of a star as Roman. Roman has been around a lot, and I mean a lot, to the point where you could say he's been a little bit overexposed. Give Drew some time to legitimize himself, and then around the Rumble, build to a rematch. And during this time, you need to have this thread of Vince McMahon corrupting guys and trying to prove that Drew just isn't that guy, even after he's had this monumental win. This keeps going until the Rumble where Roman comes back and Roman loses to Drew again. Then Vince finally accepts Drew. There's a ton you can still pull from this story. Maybe Vince corrupts Sheamus. And then what you absolutely must do is tell the very, very personal story of the bloodline. That's a money storyline and you need to do it right. You need to break up the bloodline and you need to incorporate that into a Rock vs. Roman Reigns program. I've already put in some hints of Jay kind of starting to distance himself. In my opinion, you gotta set up Cody vs. Drew somehow because those two have very similar stories of how they were released, rebuilt, and came back. And that, well... That's a video for another day. So that was the video. It's been a long while since I've done one of these. I felt like I owed you guys a long one. But as always, I hope you guys enjoyed. And until next time, take care. Peace.